After finishing the Xbox port of the Encounter Duo, Crow Team began working on the second full iteration of the series engine. While the original incarnation was wildly impressive back in 2001, new technologies were emerging quickly, and a serious update was needed. In the meantime, gathering of developers went tits up, and 2K Games snapped up Crow Team. This allowed the studio to have a bigger budget for everything, and it definitely shows in the end result. Powered by a fully upgraded Sirius engine, Sirius Sam 2, not to be confused with the second encounter, was released on October of 2005 for PC, together with a very compromised Xbox port. The game is still readily available on Steam nowadays, and that's the version that I'm playing over here, since it got a completely unexpected update back in 2021, which isn't compatible with the retail copies. This updated version includes some quality of life improvements, like better widescreen support and some gameplay tweaks, both optional and non-optional. Sadly, it doesn't have workshop support, nor is it playable through Fusion, due to differences in the engine. But it is the version that you'll most likely be playing in this day and age. Anyway, the story begins with a trio of weirdos who claim to be Syrians walking over Sam's adventures in the previous games, before forcibly summoning him into their space. Apparently, these guys have figured out a way to deal with mental for good, and it involves a MacGuffin simply known as the Medallion. The problem is that this thingy got divided into five separate pieces and hidden away in five different planets, each one held by mental's forces. So now they need a brave hero, wink wink nudge nudge, that can take down Mental's forces, gather the pieces of the medallion and save the universe. And thus, Sam goes on another adventure. It's about as simple and straightforward as you'd expect from a serious Sam game, or even more so given the kind of atmosphere that this one is going for. One look at everything, and it's immediately apparent that this game is pushing the haha <laughs> funny cartoon angle really hard. But before I elaborate on that, we have to ask the most important and existentially meaningful question of all. Where does this game fit in the Serious Sam timeline? The answer is… I don't know. It's definitely after the second encounter, and chronologically it's presumably the furthest one, since you take the fight to planet Sirius and Mental, who assaults you with a pyramid-shaped lawnmower, because of course it does. What I can say is that based on the different kinds of planets that you visit, and the very different cast of enemies you encounter, this definitely isn't the third encounter. Plus, Sam doesn't look particularly old, certainly less than in Serious Sam 4. Oh right, parallel timelines. That explains everything about this essential inquiry into the greater Serious Sam lore. Some people question whether this game is even canonical to the Crow Team cinematic universe, and my answer to that question is also quite simple. I don't know, because we keep running backwards. Seriously though, more than the timeline, or even the gameplay really, what sets this game apart is its overall atmosphere and art style. The previous titles were always colorful shooters with a healthy dose of silliness. Serious Sam 2 is an overdose of it. Some people say that the change in art style was likely forced on Crow Team by the publisher, but I don't think there's actually proof of that. 
this kind of silliness has always been present right from the first encounter, even if it was mostly contained to secrets. And the concept of visiting different planets was in the plans during the early development of the classic encounters before being cut. It's also important to keep in mind that Sirius Sam 2 was the first full sequel made by Crow Team. Sure, the kamikaze having a different design and voice comes off as weird nowadays. But back in 2005, it wasn't such an iconic part of the franchise. That recognizable scream mostly became an essential part of the series' identity with BFE and the quirky default for digital marketing. What I think happened is that a small but talented group of people got a load of money from a big publisher and the freedom to do whatever they wanted. But that same group of people then spent half the money on drugs and prostitutes high on drugs who then gave them ideas to put in the game. The visuals are, have always been and will always be the most controversial aspect of the game, with some people loving it and some utterly despising it. As for me, I think this game is nothing short of an aesthetic triumph. Serious Sam 2 is fully dedicated to its mission of trying to make you smile, and it does so effortlessly through its gameplay. Being able to make someone smile without actively trying is such an enviable quality for a piece of entertainment to have. Sure, certain parts of it are pretty cringe, and many of the pre-rendered cutscenes are hilariously bad. But seriously, the game is so earnest and natural in its attempts that I just can't get mad at it. Everything from the onslaught of colors whenever you explode enemies, the opulent and vibrant environments, to the audio cues when you pick up power-ups. Every time I hear that serious damage, I giggle like a schoolgirl being chased by a tentacle monster. Then there's the little details, like the toy rhinos making skidding sounds when they turn, or the queers making bowing pin sounds when they die. I hope that whoever had that idea got a promotion. You still have your silly secrets, dog bless, and the dialogue is constantly breaking the fourth wall, poking fun at strange things or being very self-aware. And while turning Netrixa into not Cortana is definitely a choice, we do get Giga Chad Sam out of it. He's a total doofus in this game and I love him. He never takes things too seriously in the other games, but the dynamic between him and Netty here matches up with the atmosphere perfectly. The game's putting on a show and I'm here for it. It's really rare for an FPS to use a Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic, and even more so for them to be so dedicated to fulfilling it. And you can see the budget backing it all up. For something released in 2005, it's one beautiful bastard, aside from the water and some animations here and there. The single player is fairly long too, and every planet has its queer aesthetics, both in visuals and sound. The soundtrack in particular really elevates certain levels, like the giant chunkyard. It's just so peak. Certain old enemies were redesigned into new ones, and there's a decent amount of completely new ones that never made another appearance. Oh, and props to the devs for attempting to contextualize where enemies come from, rather than just spawning them from the middle of nothing. But hey, as the saying goes, one man's treasure is another man's trash. While I do think the style is consistent, I'm not saying it's always good. Serious Sam 2 is at its most funny when it's not trying to be funny. 
It really wants you to laugh, but when it's actively trying, it frequently trips on its own foot. You have a couple of enemies like the zombie stockbrokers. Isn't it funny? It's a zombie that's a stockbroker. A zombie that's a stockbroker. Oh, or how about the orc footballer? It's an orc that plays football. An orc that plays football. Isn't that hilarious? A lot of jokes are simply too on the nose or aren't executed with the right pacing and delivery. This is especially true with the short cutscenes that play between stages, which are so poorly animated with awkward camera angles and badly paced dialogue. It's kind of strange how the rest of the game is so polished, yet the cutscenes look like someone's first MMD project. Also, this is the only Crow Team developed Sam game that doesn't have a silly blood setting, and all I have to say to that is, what the fuck? This is easily the silliest of their games, yet it's the only one that doesn't let you chip enemies into flowers and lollipops. That might just be the game's biggest choke. Gameplay-wise, the core of Serious Sam 2 doesn't deviate much from its predecessors. It's an arcade-style shooter without the trappings of modern FPS design, focused on putting the player up against hordes of cannon fodder. But there are a few noteworthy additions. The main flip around is the introduction of grenades, not those ones, which are launched instantly with the press of a button. If you've played a shooter from the past 20 years, you've seen this before, but here it's handled in a slightly different manner that dramatically alters the rhythm of the combat in several parts. Because they're instant and don't require an animation, grenades function as more of a complementary outfire, incentivizing a more aggressive playstyle by allowing you to dish out truckloads of damage against enemies. As a result, tougher enemies like the major biomechanoids can be quickly dispatched, and the player spends more time pushing against enemies rather than retreating from them. While they aren't common enough to allow you to just mindlessly spam them all the time, you can carry a whopping 30 grenades at once, with each pickup giving you 6 of them. You always have just enough to put enemies into the dirt with careful application. Like Next Encounter, this game also features vehicles, but even those buck the trends. The little ship and the UFO with blades are cool, but the real MVP is the ball. It's fun to just roll around in it and smash any unfortunate enemies into chunks. There's also turrets, though thankfully many of them are optional, rather than forced turret sections that suck. As for that new update on the Steam version, it adds some replay value by granting a couple of options to play with. You can increase enemy numbers, as well as enabling a sprint function and a dual wielding mode that lets you use twice the weapons at once. No surprise that it destroys the balance of the gameplay, but again, it's completely optional and disabled by default. Multiplayer is still a thing and it definitely still exists, though don't expect much. You've got deathmatch, a bunch of maps and that's it. Anyway, you start the game with three weapons, all of which you never touch again. The saw is the game's only melee weapon, and it serves the exact same purpose as the old chainsaw. It's just smaller and looks like a Fisher-Price toy. You also start with the Colts, which are the exact same pea shooters they've always been, and I wish we could have had the Deagles from Next Encounter instead. Wink wink nudge nudge. 
The third starting weapon is the Zap Gun, an equally pointless pea shooter that fires extremely weak shots or a slightly stronger charged shot. Doesn't matter, you get your first proper weapon right in the very first minutes. The Auto Shotgun, which is the replacement for the old single barrel shotgun. Despite its goofy appearance, it will remain a mainstay of your arsenal throughout the entire game, together with the double-barreled shotgun that you acquire not much later. Due to certain design decisions, the shotguns have been buffed significantly, with a slight increase in firing speed and a tighter spread. The auto shotgun in particular is considerably more accurate at longer ranges than the old shotgun was. The Tommy gun was replaced with a pair of Usis, but they're functionally identical. However, the new update rebalanced them by doubling their firing rate. This effectively doubled both their damage and their ammo consumption. The minigun returns as the bigger brother of the UCs, firing at high speeds with excellent range, accuracy and dealing higher damage than the UCs with each shot. The rocket launcher is also present and hasn't changed, though the blast radius seems a bit larger than the explosion would indicate. Same story with the grenade launcher, whose projectiles can be launched further by charging up. However, the delay between each shot is also lower, letting you spam grenades against tougher enemies. The sniper rifle retains the quirk of dealing more damage when scoped, making it ideal for dispatching distant enemies. A completely new weapon is Quadofic, a little parrot with a big bomb. It effectively functions as heat-seeking missiles, chasing after the closest enemy and exploding on contact. The tracking can be unreliable and ammo is very limited, but each Quadofic deals tons of damage. The laser gun was replaced by the plasma gun, which fires slower but deals more damage with each projectile. It's an alternative to the bullet hoses, trading hit scan for power. The new update also added the beam gun, which was cut during development and is based on a canned weapon from the original games. It fires a constant stream of energy, which eats ammo like popcorn but hurts enemies real good. Last but not least is the cannon, which launches extremely powerful balls that demolish enemies before exploding. You can launch the balls further by charging up, but for some reason this doesn't change the damage that each ball inflicts like it does in the other games. The issue with the arsenal isn't the weapons themselves, but rather how the game is designed around them. At the end of each planet, you lose everything aside from your pea shooters, but you always acquire the shotguns right away, within the first minute. The result is that the shotguns become over-centralizing, since they are the only weapons that you consistently have access to during the entire campaign, whereas weapons like the Grenade Launcher and Quadofic are only available in a couple of chapters. The accuracy buffs also keeps them quite effective at the endgame in comparison to the classic encounters, and you basically never run out of ammo for them. On top of that, enemies in general feel less tightly crafted than the encounters, both in terms of behaviors and wave design. Certain late game levels also have a tendency to artificially drag out for too long by repeating the exact same waves multiple times. 
Although they come in larger numbers, common enemies tend to have less health than those from the first and second encounters, which further keeps the shotguns useful. This is also one of the reasons why the combat flow has shifted somewhat from defensive to offensive. You don't need to rely as much on heavier firepower like the rocket launcher when the grenades complement them perfectly. Enemies with low HP get eliminated with a single shot, while the stragglers eat a pineapple. Meanwhile, bulkier enemies get a double surfing of lead and explosives, dying in a handful of seconds. Speaking of explosives, the blast radius is bigger than the explosion effect makes it look like, frequently leading to me hurting myself because I misjudged it. There's also some weird design choices, like how the clowns are basically stronger kamikazes but without stuttering when they're hit. They lack that fundamental mechanic of giving them a light tap to keep your distance. So if they get close enough, that's it. You can't escape damage anymore. Clears get an entire planet to themselves and it's tremendously cool, but the basic ones are embarrassing now. Their jump was nerfed so hard that you can avoid it by simply stepping back. You also don't carry over your health and armor between levels, which, I mean, I guess it lets the developers balance each level around the same status of the player, but it still seems a bit pointless. Same with the life system, which just sends you back to the previous checkpoint even though the game has quick save and quick load functionality. Lastly, it's worth noting that the difficulty settings commit a cardinal sin. The number and positioning of enemy spawns remains identical between each difficulty, but Sirius does change how much health enemies have. Not by much, mind you, it's an extra 25%. But there is a reason why the other games didn't do this, and that's because the balance between weapon damage and enemy health was very carefully crafted. Here it crumbles a bit on serious difficulty. So, after all this, you want to play Serious Sam 2. First of all, even if you have a retail copy, you should still get it on Steam because of the update. Good news is, it goes on sale for super cheap. Bad news is, there is still a couple of snags you might encounter. Depending on your mouse, the sensitivity might be a bit too high even on 0%. You might also want to look up how to increase the FOV, and to add some anti-aliasing if you so desire. Most importantly, the in-game V-Sync option is borked and will lock the game to around 33 FPS due to some quirk with the game's audio, so you should instead force it through your graphics card's control panel. I don't usually spend much time on mods, but since the game already comes packed with one, I guess I'll take a minute to introduce a trio of notable mods. First, Insanity. This comes with the Steam release, and as the name suggests, it's Serious Sam 2 but insane. Well, more than it already is. You've got options to disable self-damage, to dual-wield weapons, and to tweak firing speeds and damage. It's totally bananas, just the way Sam likes it. The options added by the new patch do make this mod a tiny bit more unnecessary, and the novelty goes out the window pretty fast but it might still be worth checking out for an hour or two of silly fun. Next is Renovation, which promises to be the same game but better, and I agree. It doesn't try to replace, it just takes what's there and improves on it through weapon and visual tweaks. 
there's a whole bunch of cosmetic changes, such as adding new blood effects similar to the HD encounters, an Xbox style HUD, and most of all, improved weapon view models. Look, Sam has hands, and fingers, and arms. A couple of enemy models have also been altered, namely the kamikaze getting its old appearance and voice, and it removes the extra enemy health from serious difficulty. Thirdly, there's Overhaul, which changes the game quite significantly. This is an attempt to make Sam 2 closer to the classic encounters, by bringing back old weapons and enemies and applying a whole bunch of tweaks that rebalance the entire gameplay. Stuff like also removing the health boost from serious difficulty, as well as making clears not be a total choke anymore. The changes also include not just enemy placements, but also a few modifications to the maps themselves, slightly changing the atmosphere of certain levels compared to the vanilla ones. The only nitpick I have with it is that some of the returning weapons and enemies don't really fit with the game's visuals anymore, since they're assets from the HD games. Ultimately, modded or not, I certainly believe that Serious Sam 2 is worth checking out. Its reputation places it as the Black Swan of the series, and I can understand that the visuals and atmosphere won't be to everyone's taste. But hell if it isn't a blast. This kind of shooter is exceedingly rare, and I really can't think of any others that are so committed to the act like this one is. Despite the cringe and some questionable gameplay decisions, I just can't bring myself to hate it. The game puts a smile on my face every time I play it, and that is one of the greatest compliments I can give to a piece of entertainment.